With its catchy Have You Played Atari Today jingle and revolutionary gameplay, the Atari 2600 brought parents out to local retail stores with their kids to get a part of the action and bring it home for communal gaming experiences all around the world. It was the first chance for gamers to step out of the arcades and bring some of the premier titles from the arcades home, such as Pole Position by Atari, Space Invaders by Bally Midway, play superstar games like Pele's Soccer, or even Atari classics like Super Breakout. But not all Atari games are created equal, and I'm here to sort the wheat from the chaff. In this video, I'll show you my top 10 Atari 2600 games of all time. At number 10, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back has special notoriety in the hearts of both Star Wars fans and video game fans as the first ever licensed Star Wars video game. It features you the player as Luke Skywalker and his famous snowspeeder fighting against the Imperial forces and their ADAT walkers in the Battle of Hoth from the movie. But unlike in the seminal film, their armor's not too strong for blasters, and when you get the force on your side, you can take them down with some well-placed shots. In those few special moments where the force is on your side, you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with those pesky walkers and fire away to put the 48 well-placed shots into them to destroy them. But without the force on your side, it takes only a few hits from the walkers to destroy your snowspeeder. But don't worry, the Empire's generous. They'll give you five ships. Just don't let those walkers reach Echo Base at the far right side of the screen or it's game over for you and the Rebellion. Coming in at number 9, Atari's Missile Command's Holocaust theme and nuclear war themes caused creator David Thur to literally have nightmares during the creation of this game. In fact, the game bothered him so bad, he literally changed the names of the six cities from real U.S. cities to fictitious alien cities. What makes this game so unique is that it was able to take the trackball controls and three button controls to fire from each of the missile bases that were in the arcade version and make them work so well with a single Atari 2600 joystick and a single fire button, simply firing the missiles from the closest base to the missile that's descending upon the cities. Much like the game before it on this list, Empire Strikes Back, there is no way to win this game. All you can do is hope to survive for as long as possible to achieve the highest score that you can. As Zig Ziglar used to say in a lot of his speeches, if you don't fly right, they are gonna get you. And that's exactly what happens in this game. The missiles will take out the last of your cities and no matter how hard you try, you will not be able to recover. And at that point, it's game over, man. Game over. At number 8, Warlords might be the most enjoyable four-player game on the Atari 2600 and maybe the very best iteration of the breakout type games ever made. Those fortunate enough to have four Atari paddles and three friends over to join them for a gaming session at the same time get to take part in one of the most enjoyable but frantic gaming experiences in the entire 2600 library of games. Your goal is to use your paddle and knock the ball into the enemy warlords until all of your enemy warlords are defeated and you are the last one standing. It can make for some very frantic matches, and sometimes the computer's gonna win. But sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Atari laid some stinkers with some of the arcade conversions they made, but at number seven, Joust is not one of them. It is one of the premier arcade conversions and it was actually done by Atari even though the game originally was a Williams arcade creation. What makes it a top 10, even though it's not programmed by Williams, is how faithfully it recreates the arcade gameplay experience on the home console. The graphics and the sound are absolutely fantastic for an Atari 2600 game, but it's much more than that. The controls are incredibly tight and it allows you to put your own ostrich anywhere on the playfield that you desire. It follows that classic principle of gaming, easy to learn and difficult to master. It's a gem, and if you have an Atari 2600, I can't tell you how much I recommend picking up this incredibly well-made game. While River Raid could stand a place on this top 10 list clearly, Demon Attack takes the number six spot. The game starts out pretty simple and takes it a bit easy on the player, but within just a few levels, it gets pretty aggressive and pretty frantic and it has one of the coolest alien spawn animations of any Atari 2600 game. Just take a look at this thing in slow motion. Even by contemporary video gaming standards, that's cool. 
Although the game was ported to a number of different consoles and home computers, Rob Fulop's great creation made it to the Atari 2600 first, and it has more than just a cult classic following today. It's well regarded as one of the finest Atari 26 shoot 'em ups out there. Anyone who makes an Atari 2600 top 10 list and doesn't include number 5 Space Invaders on it means one of two things. Either they weren't alive during 1980 when the game came out, or they're very bad researchers. Space Invaders as an arcade game was so popular it literally created a yen shortage in Japan. And when it came over to the US and got ported as the first officially licensed game by one game manufacturer to another on a home console, it became the official killer app for the Atari 2600. It became the game to own for all 2600 owners around the world. The game is so synonymous with Atari at this point, most people actually recognize this version of the game better than they recognize the original black and white arcade version from 78. This game put more blisters on thumbs than a hot stove and made intergalactic heroes of gamers all around the world. Okay, stop the music. Let me just say up front how much I loathe playing this game. This game has been the bane of my existence since the 1980s when it was in the arcade. But it is one of the best coded, smoothest, finest ports of an arcade game to the Atari 2600 and it deserves my respect. By comparison, take a look at its predecessor, Defender. One look, and you'll see that this huge steaming pile of 25 cent yard sale bantha fodder, flickering mess that kids had dropped on them in the 1980s when they ran out of quarters at the local arcade and had to go home and settle for this. Just one look by comparison, and Stargate is an absolute masterpiece. Not only did they manage to take the highly complex and evolved controls on Stargate's arcade control panel and make them masterful on an Atari 2600 joystick, the gameplay, graphics, and sound are as close as any port has ever been made to the Atari 2600. Incredible. Another great arcade port to the Atari 2600 that us mere mortal folk can play is Berserk. Its difficulty curve starts you out fighting robots that aren't armed. All you have to do is dodge the robots, dodge the walls, and dodge Evil Otto, that stupid smiling face that keeps coming in to get you. Some of the things that make this game so darn fun to play are that the graphics are very close to the original arcade game in appearance. The sounds, while they do in fact match the arcade game in terms of their character and quality, they still retain the original Atari 2600 sound of them and the controls are so tight and so precise that they make this game something anyone can pick up and play right away. And even though the original 2600 game didn't have speech because the hardware just didn't support it at the time, a new homebrew version is out there at AtariAge.com that does. It's almost inconceivable today to think that the programmer of the number two game on this list, Yars Revenge, is also the programmer on what is almost universally considered to be the worst video game in the history of video games, E.T. for the Atari 2600. Yars Revenge is a masterpiece. Atari practically invented the concept that games don't have to have exceptionally high quality graphics in order to have exceptionally high value gameplay, and Yars Revenge fits that bill to a T. In this game, you're the Yar, and your goal is to either shoot away or nibble away at the shield of the evil Kotal, and by nibbling away at the shield pieces or touching the co-tile itself, you arm your Zolan cannon, and your goal is to shoot the Zolan cannon and destroy the co-tile with a well-placed shot. Just like that exhaust board on the Death Star, one well-aimed shot and victory is yours for about five seconds. And then the co-tile comes back at you again with an even more powerful shield, and the job gets even tougher than the first round. But through your nerves of steel and a well-timed shot, the co-tile is history once again. With up to 32 times the amount of ROM storage of traditional Atari 2600 cartridges and its own dedicated display and sound chip, Pitfall 2 is the most stunning and technically advanced game from the golden era of video games for the Atari 2600. Activision programmer David Crane's PS de Resistance ushered in perhaps the finest hour of Atari's golden era gaming and also perhaps its swan song. Building on the smash hit success of the original Pitfall game, 
Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns features eight screens wide and 27 vertical levels deep, an impressive feat for any Atari 2600 game. It raised the bar for platformer gaming on both the Atari 2600 and many of the consoles to come. It also took the number of lives you had or the amount of time you have to play the game away as factors. So when Pitfall Harry gets caught, it just goes back to a checkpoint that you've touched in the game somewhere. While checkpoints in games may seem routine today, this was a very special thing to have in a game back in the era of the golden age of video games. While like some other games on this list, it was ported to other video game consoles and computers, Atari 2600 was the first one to get it. And to me, even to this day, 36 years after its release, it remains the premier game on the console. Do you agree with this list? Do you think there are some games that should be on there that weren't? Tell me in the comments down below, what are your favorite games for the Atari 2600? Make sure you subscribe while you're here so you don't miss the next great upcoming videos. And for more great Atari 2600 content, click the video shown here and listed in the description and pinned below.